This next class that we're going to do you have designed specifically for runners. So we're going to come into some body awareness. We're going to help you develop your stability and also work on your mobility, especially in the hips. For this class, I'm going to be using a strap. So if you don't have a strap, bring out a belt or a towel as a great substitute. We're going to start this class in our strong standing posture of mountain pose. So come to the front of the mat. Feet hip distance pointed straight forward. Feel into big toe mound, little toe mound, inner, outer side of the heel, the four corners of the feet. Hips in a neutral position, core slightly engaged. Collarbones wide, shoulders relax, and bring the ears over the shoulders so the neck is long. Relax the arms to the sides of the body with the palms facing straight forward. We're going to stay in our mountain pose for about four breath cycles of what we call a three-dimensional breath. So on the inhale, breathing through the nose, Feel the front, sides, and back of the body all expanding and widening. The exhale, just gently releasing the air from the body slowly through the nose. On every inhale, see if you can open up through all three dimensions of the body a little bit more. Every exhale, just gently releasing the air through the nose. We're going to do that in our mountain pose for about two more breath cycles. Just starting to work with the breath a little bit more effectively a little bit more efficiently. And as you do that, what I invite you to do is to bring your awareness into your body, move through a body scan. So take your awareness from head to toe and simply notice how your body feels at this point in time. We're gonna use that as a foundation for our body awareness in our practice. From mountain pose, we're gonna inhale, bring the arms up and out to the side and then overhead. Long spine, strong core, leading with the chest on an exhale. Hinge forward at the hips, coming into a forward fold. Now, relaxing into this first forward fold. Allow the knees to be bent enough, the upper body is super closer onto the thighs. Doesn't matter how straight those legs are. We're just looking to gain some gentle length through the back of the thighs. Really allow the head to hang here, neck to relax, and we'll stay for one more breath. Place your hands on your shins. Inhale, rise halfway up with the upper body. So come to a 90 degree angle at your hips with your torso. Look down at the ground so the neck is long. We're gonna stay here for a breath or two. I want you to feel active length through your spine. So feel like the tailbone and the crown of the head are really drawing away from each other. The exhale, fold forward. Same length in the spine, strengthen the core. Inhale, come all the way up to standing, arms up and right away. Exhale, fold forward at the hips. Hands on shins, inhale, rise halfway up. Exhale, fold, bend the knees enough, hands reach the ground. Inhale, left foot back towards back of the mat. Drop the back knee down, coming to a low lunge. Remember, if your back knee is sensitive, you can always pat up that back knee with a cushion or folding the mat over. Come on up to your fingertips. Your chest rises, your spine lengthens. Make sure your front knee is directly over ankle, foot and knee are pointed straight forward, and we'll square the hips. Feel like you're drawing your front heel back towards the back of the mat. Feel like you're drawing your back knee forward towards the front of the mat. You should feel engagement in the hip flexors, in the glutes, and you should feel those hips square. On the inhale, rise up with the upper body, bring the arms up, Bring the torso over the hips, feel that length in the spine, the connection to the core and the strength through your pelvis. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, back knee comes up. Exhale, back foot meets front, forward fold. Hands on shins. Inhale, rise halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up to standing, arms up and right away. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, rise up halfway. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees enough, hands reach the ground, and inhale, right foot back to back of the mat. Drop the back knee down, finding our low lunge on the other side. Remember, creating that strength in the pelvis, squaring the hips. Come on up to fingertips, lengthen the spine, raise the chest, and then inhale. Rise up with the upper body, arms up. Find that length from tailbone to the crown of the head. Find that stability. Exhale. Fold forward. Inhale, back knee comes up. Exhale, back foot meets front, forward fold. Inhale, rise up halfway. Exhale, fold. 
Inhale, come all the way up to standing arms up, and we're going to flow through that one more time. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, rise up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, left foot back towards back of the mat. Drop the back knee down, set up strong. Inhale, rise up, arms up to your strong low lunge. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, back knee up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up to standing, arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, rise up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, right foot back to back of the mat. Drop your back knee down. Set up for your strong low lunge. Inhale, rise up, arms up. Exhale, fold forward. This time, back knee, back foot are going to stay where they are. Bring your front foot to meet your back and come into a tabletop position. So you're coming on to hands and knees. Now we're going to mobilize and move through the hips, the spine, and the shoulders through cat-cow. So following your breath, on an inhale, lift your tailbone, arch your spine, chest forward, chin forward, and shoulder blades towards spine. Exhale, drop your tailbone, round your spine, drop your head, press the ground away, feel the shoulder blades come away from spine. One more time. Inhale, lifting tailbone, arching spine, chest forward, chin forward. Exhale, dropping tailbone, rounding spine, dropping head, pressing ground away. Inhale, come to a neutral spine. Now we're going to build a little stability through the core, right across the body. Okay, on the inhale, bring your right leg back. Keep the toes down so you really feel how the hips are even here. Connect to the core and you want to keep those hips even as you lift the foot up and off the ground. So don't worry about how high that foot comes. Keep the toes curled and pointed towards the ground. On your inhale, bring your left arm up and forward. Arm straight from the shoulder socket, thumb up. Now, feel that connection from the fingertips of the left hand all the way through to the right foot. Feel that connection right across the core. Exhale, come back down. Find your tabletop, reset your foundation. Then inhale, left foot comes back, toes down, hips even, connect to the core. Inhale, lift the foot, keep those hips even. Right arm up and forward. Arm straight from shoulder socket, thumb up. See if you can find more active length through the spine. Breathe. Exhale. Slowly come back down to your tabletop. Walk your knees back a few inches. Tuck your toes under. Now, make sure your fingers are spread wide and pointed straight forward. Press into your fingertips. Claw into the mat with the first knuckle. Externally rotate the shoulder so your elbow creases are pointed forward. Okay, or they're starting to point towards forward. You want to feel stability in your shoulders. On your inhale, just hover the knees an inch or so off the ground. And then, on your exhale, press the ground away. Press the hips up and back in a diagonal direction, finding length in the spine. So feel that stability in the shoulders with the shoulders externally rotated. Feel that length in the spine. Bend the knees, probably more than you think you should, and press those hips up and back a little more. Now we'll come into the calves a little here. So bending the knees on the inhale. On the exhale, bring left leg towards straight, right knee bent. Feel that length coming through the calves on the left side. Inhale, bend into both knees. Exhale, right leg towards straight, left knee bends. Inhale, bend into both knees. Come on up to tip toes. Exhale, walk your feet forward towards your hands, coming into your forward fold at the front of the mat. Place your hands on your shins. Inhale, rise halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up to standing, arms up. Exhale, bring your hands down through center. Find your strong standing posture of mountain pose once again. And we're going to come right back to that three-dimensional breath for three breath cycles. And as you do that, move through another body scan. Just notice how things have changed. How's your body responded so far? 
And so we'll stand our mountain pose for one more three-dimensional breath. The inhale, really feel front, sides, back of the body expanding. Exhale, letting go. Okay, now we're going to bring a little bit of glute activation in here with a pose of chair. So you're going to, from your mountain pose, place your hands on your hips. We're going to really find that neutral positioning for the hips. We're going to start by rocking them back and forth. Okay, so you find what points or what your end ranges are for that rocking motion. And then start to find the middle. Find that middle ground, which will be a neutral hip position. Feel the core strong. And as you're here, start to press your seat back. Now, you want to make sure upper body fairly upright to start. Knees are pointed straight forward and you can see your toes in front of your knees. Collarbones are wide, shoulders relaxed, the neck is long. Place the hands on the hips and make sure you've got that neutral positioning of the hips. Feel like you're drawing your tailbone down towards the ground, lengthening through the spine. Then, lean forward a little, maybe press the seat back a little more. One thing that tends to happen is people tend to just jut their butts out. Make sure you keep those hips in a neutral position. Feel the weight come back into your heels. See if you can feel more strength in the glutes, the muscles in the seat. Bring your palms together right in front of your sternum, holding for another breath. And then on your exhale, fold forward. Hands on shins. Inhale, rise halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, bring your left foot back towards back of the mat. So we're finding a lunging position. This time we're going to come into a high lunge. So come on up to fingertips. This is our runner's lunge. Chest rises, spine lengthens. Square those hips. Feel like you're squeezing your feet towards each other. And then on your inhale, rise up, arms up, torso over hips. See if you can sink down a little bit more. Build some strength into those legs. Square those hips. Feel that stability in the pelvis. And on your exhale, fold forward. Drop your back knee down. Heel toe your right foot out to the right side of the mat. Place your hands to the inside of that foot. Turn the foot to a 45 degree angle. Now, make sure your pelvis stays even. As you exhale, simply drop your right knee out to the side. So you're externally rotating in your right hip. Just creating a gentle opening there through the hip. Once again, try not to lean into one side or the other. Just keeping the pelvis even and allow that hip to open. Inhale, bring that knee in. Heel toe, the foot back to center. Inhale, back knee up. Exhale, back foot meets front, forward fold. Inhale, rise halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up to standing, arms up. Exhale, hands down through center. Finding mountain pose. And we got the other side to do. So bring the hands to the hips. Find that neutral positioning for your pelvis. Sink back to your chair. Okay, feel that connection to the core. Check your knees and feet. Make sure collarbones are still wide. Lean forward a little. Press the seat back more. Feel the weight come back into your hips. But make sure the pelvis is in a neutral position. Palms together right in front of the sternum. One more breath. Exhale, fold forward. Hands on shins. Inhale, rise halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, right foot back to back of the mat. Set up in your runner's lunge. Gain that stability and strength. And then inhale, rise up, arms up. Torso over hips. Feel the length from tailbone to the crown of the head, the connection to the core. Maybe sink down a little bit more. Breathe. Exhale, fold forward, drop your back knee down. Heel toe, left foot out to the left side of the mat. Hands to the inside of that left foot. Turn the left foot to a 45 degree angle. Drop your left knee out to the side. Keeping those hips or keeping the pelvis as even as possible. Ro externally rotating in that left hip and notice how the left side feels different than the right. Breathe. Bring the knee in. Heel toe, the foot back to center. Inhale, back knee comes up. Exhale, back foot meets front, forward fold. 
Hands on shins. Inhale, rise halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up to standing, arms up. Exhale, hands come down through center. Find your strong standing posture of mountain pose once again. And now, we're going to come into a little bit of balance. Once again, stability that we're going to build through that chair. We're really activating through the glutes. Something that a lot of runners tend to have trouble with. So we're really bringing that in here. We're also bringing in ankle strength by now coming to balance. And we're going to get into the quads and the hip flexors a little more. So from mountain pose, find that neutral position in the hips. Exhale, sink back to a chair. Okay, bring the hands just in front of the sternum. Strong into the right foot. Come on up to the left tip toes. Inhale, start to lengthen up. Bring the left knee up towards the chest. Hold on to the front of the shin. Okay, if your range is a little limited, maybe you hold on to the back of the thigh. You're just playing with your balance here. Now, staying with that balance, you're just going to release the leg, hands to center. Exhale, bring that foot back down, sink back to your chair. Inhale, tiptoes to the right, lengthen the left, come up with the right knee. Hold on to the right shin. Okay, challenge yourself, play with that balance. Notice the difference between the sides. Staying balanced and controlled. Exhale, sinking back down to your chair. Coming on up to the tiptoes of the left foot. Lengthening the right this time, left palm comes up and out to the side. Left foot into left hand. Knees are even, hips are pointed straight forward. Okay, lengthen your right arm up, reach up. Kick your foot into your hand, start to feel a stretch into the front of the thigh, into the quads. Breathe, make sure you keep the pelvis pointed straight forward. Then, we're going to stay in our balance, just release the leg, bring the hands to the hips, and start to hinge at the hips, like you're coming to a halfway lift. So you're leading with the chest, the core is strong, start to lengthen that left leg back behind you, curl the toes, point them towards the ground, and then slowly step back into a lunging position. We're not going to stay in that high lunge, we're going to lower our hands down, Drop the back knee down. Bring that back knee back enough. You start to feel a stretch in your hip flexors. Remember, you can always pad the back knee. Top of the foot down. This time, squaring the hips, just really feeling like you're dragging that front heel towards the back of your mat. Feeling that squaring the hips, slowly coming on up to the front thigh. Gently pressing down, gently pressing forward. Feeling that stretch in those hip flexors. Inhale, reach out, left arm up, reach up, reach up, and exhale, reach over to the right. Holding here for about two breaths. Might start to feel this through the abdomen, through, or it targeting one of the biggest hip flexors, the psoas. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, fold forward. Tuck your back toes under. Inhale, back knee comes up. Exhale. Back foot meets front, forward fold. Inhale, rise up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up to standing, arms up. Exhale, hands come down through center, and we're going to wrap right back down to our chair. Okay, feeling the strength in our chair. Come on to the tiptoes of the right foot. Lengthen the left leg, right palm comes out. Right foot into the right hand. Knees are even. Hips are pointed straight forward. Lengthen your left arm up. Kick your foot into your hand. Maybe bring the knee back if that's what your range allows. Okay, we're targeting some length coming through the front of the thigh. Breathe. Then, staying with your balance, just release the leg. Bring the knee forward. Hands to hips. And then, start to hinge at the hips. Strong in to that balancing left leg, core strong, and slowly step back to your lunging position. I had a little wobbly on that side this time. Okay, fold forward, 
drop the back knee down. Back the back knee up enough, you feel that stretch in the hip flexors. Top of the foot down. Feel like you're drawing that heel back. And then, come on up to your front thigh. Gently press down, gently press forward. Notice how the sides differ. You just saw with my balancing, how my left and my right differ, right? Understanding the body a little better. Inhale, lengthen the right arm up, reach up, reach up, reach up. Exhale, reach over to the left. Breathe. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, fold forward. Tuck your back toes under. Inhale, back knee comes up. Exhale, back foot meets front forward fold. Hands on shins. Inhale, rise halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up to standing arms up. Exhale, bring your hands down through center. Let's return back to that mountain pose again for about three of those three-dimensional breaths. Really connect back to that breath, back to the rhythm of breath, back to the fullness of breath. As you move through, make sure you stick with that. Keep breathing fully, keep breathing efficiently. One more round of that three-dimensional breath. Right, obviously something that's really important when we're talking about running is breathing with efficiency. Now, place hands on hips. You're gonna inhale and simply step your right foot back towards the back of the mat. Now, you're gonna turn your right foot to a 90 degree angle so your toes are facing the wide side of the mat or the short side of your mat and the outside of the foot are parallel. Turn your left foot to be in the exact same direction as the right. So we're in a wide-legged stance here. Bring your hands right in front of your chest, palms together. And then we're gonna exhale, you're gonna press your seat back like a chair. You're gonna bend into your right knee. Your knee's gonna follow that same line as the foot and you're gonna lengthen that left leg. So we're starting to really come into the inner thighs here, come into the hips. You're gonna stay low. Inhale, come through center. Exhale, bend into that left knee, pressing the seat back. Knee following the same direction as the foot. Inhale, come back to center, staying low. Exhale, sink back down. One more time, inhale through center. Exhale, coming to the other side. Inhale, come back to center, rising up turning that left foot to point forward and stepping the right foot back to your mountain. Now, coming in to the inner thighs, into the hips a little more. Gonna bring the feet about mat distance apart. Point the toes to a 45 degree angle. Inhale, bring the arms up and out to the side and then overhead. Palms together and exhale. Bring your hands down through center. And we're gonna to start to drop our seat down to whatever a low squat is for you. That might mean hands on thighs, that's okay. That might mean forearms on thighs. That might mean your elbows come to the inside of the knees. Now, wherever you are, press your sternum forward. So you open up through chest and shoulders. We don't wanna be hunched. Open up, okay? Stay wide through the collarbones and just sink into the hips. Breathe, stay with that three-dimensional breath. On your next exhale, wherever you are, start to drop your hands down, lengthen your legs, lifting the seat up, coming to a forward fold. Turn the feet to point straight forward and just relax into your fold for a few breaths. Here, maybe you move, maybe you stay in stillness. You decide. Then, turn your feet to a 45 degree angle. Place your hands on your shins. Inhale, rise halfway up with the upper body, chest forward. Exhale, sink your seat back down to whatever the deep squat variation was for you. Okay, and just notice if there's any change allowing those hips to open a little more. We're gonna stay here for two more breaths. I know it's a lot of fun. 
Next, exhale. Fold forward, raise the hips, turn the feet to point forward, coming into a standing forward fold. Heel toe, feet back to hip distance. Relax into this fold and just notice how this forward fold feels different than your first. Place hands on shins. Inhale, rise halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up to standing, arms up. Exhale, bring your hands down through center. And then what we're going to do, no fancy way of doing it, you're just going to make your way onto your back however you wish. Once you come onto your back, make sure that your strap is handy. Coming onto your back, spring soles of the feet flat on the ground about mat distance apart. Bring the arms out wide like airplane wings, palms up. Exhale, drop your knees to the left, turn your gaze to the right. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, drop knees to the right, turn gaze to the left. Let's do that one more time on each side. Inhale to center. Exhale, knees to left, gaze to right. Inhale to center. Exhale, knees to right, gaze to left. Inhale, bring the knees back to center. Bring the feet back to hip distance. Bring the heels directly under the knees. Point the feet straight forward. Bring the arms to the sides of the body. Point the fingertips towards the sky so the elbows are bent to a 90 degree angle, palms pointed towards each other. Now, feeling into the four corners of the feet, big toe mound, little toe mound, inner and outer side of the heel. First on your exhale, press into your arms so your back engages. Inhale, press into those four corners of the feet, lifting the hips up and off the ground, coming into a back bridge. Now, what we want to look for is creating that engagement in the glutes. We want to create that activation that we've been really working on throughout our practice. So what we're going to do here is just do a little bit of curiosity. So when you're here, if you feel like you're turning your heels towards each other without actually moving them, what actually happens to the engagement in the glutes? Now, do the opposite. Feel like you're turning the heels away from each other. What happens to the activation in the glutes there? The exhale, slowly lower the seat all the way down to the ground. Once the seat reaches the ground, on your inhale, bring your left ankle onto your right thigh. Allow your left hip to externally rotate, knee coming away from the body, gently curling the toes back towards the shin. Make sure the hips are even. And on your inhale, bring your right knee in towards your chest, hold on to the back of your right thigh. Now, I should have said, if you're here and the sole of the foot is down, and this is enough stretch for you in your left hip, stay here. Okay, by no means do you need to force yourself anywhere. Okay, working with your range. And just staying in our figure four for about two more of those three-dimensional breaths. Okay, exhale, gently release. Inhale, unwind the legs, soles of the feet, hip distance. Inhale, right ankle, left thigh. Allow the hip to externally rotate. Gently curl the toes back towards the shin. Hips are even. Once again, if this is enough for you, stay here. If you want, you might inhale and bring the left knee in towards the chest. Hold on to the back of the left thigh and allow that right hip to open. Breathe. Notice the difference between this side and the last. Next, exhale, just gently release the leg. Inhale, unwind the legs, bring the knees into the chest. This is where we're gonna use the strap. So hold on to the right knee, or right shin, sorry. Exhale, extend left leg long. Place the heel down. Just gently curl the toes. Make sure the toes are pointed towards the sky. Take the strap. Place it around the ball of the right foot. Start at the 90 degree angle at your right hip. 
And then working with your range, just gently extending that right leg long. Finding some length through the back of the leg, maybe through the hamstrings, through the calves. Breathe. Every inhale, opening. Every exhale, letting go. Next, inhale. Bring that right knee in towards your chest. Hold on to your shin. Just take the strap, place it to the left side of the mat. And then bring your right arm out wide like an airplane wing, wing palm down. Hold on to the outside of your right knee or thigh with your left hand. And then exhale, gently guide the right knee over towards the left side, coming into a gentle twist. And if it's okay for you to, just turn the gaze to the right and breathe. Inhale, come back to center. Draw both knees back into the chest and then find the strap. Hold on to your left shin, extend your right leg long, heel down, toes curled, pointed towards the sky. Take the strap, place around the ball of the left foot, start the 90 degree angle at your hip, bend in the knee, exhale, extend that left leg long, finding some length through the hamstrings and breathe. Notice how the sides differ. But try to stay away from good or bad, weak or strong. Just really try to understand your body a little bit more. Next, inhale. Bend into that left knee. Bring it back into the chest. Just take the strap, place it to one side of the mat or the other. And then, Holding on to the outside of the left knee or thigh with your right hand, bring the left arm out wide like an airplane wing, palm down, and gently guide that left knee towards the right side. Turning the gaze to the left. Coming into your twist and noticing differences between the two sides. Breathe. Inhale, come back to center, and then just extend out into your Shavasana pose. Legs long on the ground, about mat distance apart. Arms to the sides of the body with the palms facing straight up towards the sky. Returning back to that three-dimensional breath. Just giving yourself a few moments to really relax and let go. Now you can stay in Shavasana for as long as you wish. When you choose to come out of Shavasana, I encourage you to first move through another body scan. Just really notice how your body has responded to what you've done. Take a breath or two and notice how your mind's responded to what you've done. And then, starting with smaller movements, work your way up to larger movements. Eventually coming on to one side or the other and gently pressing yourself up to a seated position. 